Let's talk about Labyrinth, the 1989 musical fantasy directed by Jim Henson, produced by George Lucas, starring David Bowie, a young Jennifer Connelly, and a bunch of puppets. It's finally getting a sequel. So sequel talks ramped up back in 2017. At the time, it was going to be written by Nicole Perlman. She co-wrote Guardians of the Galaxy, Detective Pikachu, Captain Marvel, and it was going to be directed by Fede Alvarez, who's probably best known for the Evil Dead reboot. Last month, Alvarez said that he stepped down as director, so it seemed like maybe things were slowing down with the sequel, until today, Deadline reported that Scott Derrickson is stepping in to direct this movie. You'll know Scott Derrickson as the director of Doctor Strange. He recently left Doctor Strange 2. We wondered, what's it going to do instead? Taking a different sequel, Labyrinth 2. It's going to be written by Maggie Levin, who's another writer that's not very well known. She recently wrote Miss 2059, a sci-fi show that I'm, I had a hard time actually figuring out where this show originally aired. I know it's streaming on Amazon. I believe it premiered as a streaming show originally. Wherever it originally started, though, it's available on Amazon now. She also wrote an episode of Into the Dark, the horror anthology show on Netflix. So first reaction I had to seeing all this is I thought it was so weird that none of the articles are mentioning the prequel series that Netflix did. Then I remembered I'm thinking of Dark Crystal, the other collaboration between Brian Froud and Jim Henson. So Labyrinth has not had any sort of a sequel or prequel, at least not in film form. Alan, is this a movie that you've actually seen? I know I asked you this earlier today and I already forgot your answer. No, I, f- I feel like the only times I've ever seen it was at a bar where it's like projected on the wall or something and you couldn't hear anything. Right. But that's exactly, <laughs> that is one of many places that you would see this movie because there's so much nostalgia around this movie, such a cult following, especially because of David Bowie. So I wouldn't be surprised to walk into a bar and having it uh, projecting in the background. Personally, I don't have a lot of nostalgia for this show. I only saw it a few years ago, and the draw for me was David Bowie. I just wanted to see and absorb everything David Bowie had any part of. So I'm kind of of two minds with this sequel. On the one hand, it's kind of sad to see a property resurrected when, at least for me, and I think a lot of other people, the main draw was David Bowie. In fact, when the movie originally came out, the critics did not really like it. But across the board, I think people praised Bowie's bizarre musical numbers and his performance as the Goblin King. So that kind of, it's kind of depressing that it's coming back without him, but hopefully they can find some way to live up to his legacy or respect and honor his legacy. Ultimately, though, if I were to look at the positives and the negatives, I'm curious and somewhat optimistic for this movie. Mainly because when you think puppets, you think practical effects. So one of the things I remember about this movie that really sticks out to me is just the interesting design and the aesthetic of it. If they can bring that back, that would be awesome, especially if they can bring it back with practical effects and do something that harkens back to what this movie looked like in the 80s. And when I think interesting and bizarre bizarre visuals, This director, Scott Derrickson, is not necessarily the one who would come to mind. He's best known for horror like Sinister or The Exorcism of Emily Rose. But if you think back to Doctor Strange, there were some bizarre and trippy sequences in that movie. So I do think he has it in him. And there could be something to be said about having a traditional horror director doing this movie that's geared towards children, if you bring in others into the production that can bring in that child sensibility and combine it with this person who's got an eye for horror, that could give the interesting and bizarre visual effect that I think you need for a Labyrinth sequel. Charlie Chalk in the chat says, I'm ashamed to say I've never seen Labyrinth. I love the Dark Crystal Netflix series though. I have to say, I honestly don't remember Labyrinth that well, so you can see it didn't make a big impact on me, but I know that it is very similar to the original Dark Crystal film. It came from a similar collaborative place, so if you were a fan of Dark Crystal, I recommend checking out Labyrinth. By the way, Alon, apparently every year there is a huge masquerade ball. It's one of the biggest in the world thrown by fans for Labyrinth. Everyone gets in costumes and just dance the night away. 
I think uh, obviously it's canceled this year, but next year I think we should do a one take goes to the <laughs> Labyrinth Masquerade Ball and uh, we'll do a show from there. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> we will not. If we get to 1,000 subscribers, then we'll commit to that. You mean when? When we get to 1,000 subscribers, <laughs> you get the Labyrinth Masquerade Ball special. Maybe. We should cut this part out so we don't have to. We yeah, don't have to. I don't know why to you that. promised that. <laughs>